Yes, folks, welcome along to a brand new series of Up in the Ante with thanks to our sponsors, Bet365 with David Jennings and Johnny Deneen, counting down to the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. Yes, we're back with a brand new show and a new look show, might I add. We've had a few little tweaks along the way because, Johnny, you can't stand still in this game. You have to up your game all the time, as you well know. It's <laughs> yeah. great to have you back, though. We've got the funds out. <laughs> Big transfer fees were coming in from all over the place. But we've managed to, to get you to sign on the dotted line. And you are staying on up in the ante. How are you? Good, yeah, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah look, looking forward to it anyway, is right, yeah. Absolutely. I'm just delighted you're talking to Riff Raff like me now that you're a hotshot <laughs> celebrity, Johnny. I wouldn't say that now, to be honest, but you look. You won't forget me, will you? No, absolutely not. No, no, absolutely How not. has 2023 been for Johnny Deneen? So the last show we had folks was back in March after the Cheltenham Festival we haven't seen you since on this show now people might have seen you elsewhere I don't know yeah you're, yeah you're yeah. popping up kind of here there everywhere, things there and there, yeah. yeah how has your 2023 been good enough yeah good enough happy with it so uh, good start uh, first six months like really hurling well though you know what I mean and uh, hurling that's an Irish game but yeah way, yeah British exactly viewers. yeah use so a stick and you hit a performing stick. well or whatever you like to call okay. it yeah you're hurling well yeah and uh, I was saying like if I can if I can win the same amount in the next six months like I'll have, a, I'll have an extra year but I haven't so I've, st I've stood still now for three or four months but look I, I'm happy enough I'm happy enough it, I barring a complete De decombustulation is it <laughs> I should win this year anyway <laughs> so how would you price yourself up to be on fr in front at the end of 2023 or, are you 1 to 33 or bearing death bearing okay. death yeah absolutely <laughs> absolutely no I, I couldn't see it at this stage it's, it, I definitely have enough of a lead the, the way I'm betting now it is I should, it should be able to hang on now yeah definitely. excellent now it is of course Tuesday we're filming here up in the ante we're back for the brand new series and some of you may have got up in the middle of the night to watch Vauban. Johnny, did you get up? No, I did not, no. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think I ever watched the Melbourne Cup, to be honest, ever. Um, look, I had no interest in it, really. Sure, we don't know anything about it. A good few fans in Melbourne now that watch the show. Yeah, look, it, it's a big race out in Australia, but it's not a big race to me, really. Sure, I mean, it's a 23-runner handicap. And Were you shocked that Vauban only finished 14th? No, I wasn't shocked. If, if I wouldn't have been shocked if he won or finished 23rd. You know what I mean? I have no interest. I, I, don't, you, I don't know how anyone could say for certain what way he was going to run out there. You know what I mean? Mm. That kind of way. Look, I, look. If, if I if I put on the, the phone this morning, and he won. Was I shocked? No, not a hope. But was I shocked that he finished fourteenth? I wasn't either, to be honest. No. Your philosophy is you have to know the race is your back. Well, I mean, I, I didn't know. I think without a fight, it was an ex English horse, wasn't he? Yeah. So like, I actually didn't even know he wasn't been trained by Simon Christopher. Actually, when I looked at the first, I thought he was still with Simon Christopher. He's okay. an Australian for the trained him. So look, look, I don't follow Australian racing, and that's basically it. Like, I, 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 I mean. Was I surprised or anything? Like, not in the slightest. No, no, I wasn't. As you said to me, Brian, you didn't even know what weight he had. No, it was in kilos, and yeah. I, I still do the pounds. You Do know you mean? weigh yourself in kilos or pounds? Oh, like I tell you, once you, I, 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 I lead about three runs this year to get right. <laughs> I'm after putting on a share of weight again, yeah. It is just you have not. You're very oh, I think hard I have. You have a brand new jumper on. I think you're looking well. No, no, that's the camouflage. That's about the, that's about four sizes. The Johnny, I have good speed. news for you. You're always going to look skinny next week. <laughs> anyway, enough of that rubbish. Let's get on with the show. Yes, of course, you know the drill by now. We kick off with our questions from the crowd. But it's our questions from the crowd with a difference this season, Johnny Deneen. Because we're going to have people appearing on the show. Yes, we want you to send in your video questions to us to appear on the show. You could appear on Up in the Ante. Here's producer Sam to tell you how. That's right, DJ. Viewers can now get their video questions in for the show. If you'd like to appear on Up in the Ante yourself, send in your video questions. So the email down in the description is up in the ante at Racing Post. Dot com. You must be over 25 to do so, and you may end up appearing on the Up in the Ante series for the 23-24 National Hunt season. I'll tell you what, while I'm here, DJ and Johnny, I've got a question for you myself. If you were to give me an anti-post tip away from the Cheltenham Festival for the National Hunt season, who would that be? <laughs> Good man, Sam. You're certainly getting your money's worth out of us this week. So, Johnny, if you were to have an anti-post bet away from the Cheltenham Festival right now, right here... What would it be? Look, I think I'd go with maybe Manor Mission for the um, for the, the old Coral Hennessy. Gold Cup, yeah. the, it's the is it Ladbrook or the Carl? Is it? I think it's the Carl Gold Cup now. Yeah. Is that what they call it? No, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought he ran well in Carlisle, like over over in 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 Look, it's the first show, Johnny. You're okay. <laughs> It'll come to you in about week three or yeah, four. Okay. Inadequate. Inadequate. 
two and a half miles, yeah. So look, he was outspeeded by um, that horse of Thunder Rock. Thunder Rock, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. On, on the running, but he jumps well, and 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 but he's maybe a bit exuberant. But but in the Hennessy, like, there'll be probably other horses to go up in front, so he won't have to be up uh, ridden so far forward mm. in the race. So look, I could see him with his jumping. Hanging in there the home turn and he he'd be dangerous up the ho- up the home straight and over his three quart three two, three mile and two is about his trip at like he's around fourteen to one him and Man Big Genius are the two I thought for that race but I'll go with Maller Maller's mission Maller right. mission okay Maller mission at fourteen to one for Johnny potentially in the Carl Gold Cup the one that I like is in the Great Wood uh, the weekend after next are you going to Cheltenham by the way next weekend no 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 I'm not going you're usually yeah yeah no I, I'm not going to go this year um, I'm going to another meeting before Christmas in in, in midweek ones in in Newbury and, and Ascot instead. Oh, the the quality of the racing on the Saturday there I didn't think was great last year. And plus it's clashing with a few nice Irish meetings, so I'm actually going to stay at home this year. Okay, you're staying at home. Okay, well I like one in the Great Wood on the Sunday, uh, on Sunday week at Chelham. Jim Coco was second in the race last year to the ill-fated. I like to move it. I just loved his return to action at Foss Last. I thought it was a real pipe opener for another crack at the Great Wood. And I thought around eleven to one or twelve to one maybe. I thought Jim Coco had a big chance in the Great Wood. So there you go, folks. That's Sam sending in our question to us. Thanks to producer Sam but you can appear on next week's show send in your video questions to us up in the ante at racingpost.com send them in we'll pick out the best ones and you can appear on the show so our next question this week comes in from jeremy crowley and jeremy wants to know johnny since the show finished up last march what was your most memorable winner what was the one result that you got a right touch of um, look, it wouldn't be that I got a right touch off or, or off one because I don't do like exotic bets and trebles and accumes. So like, I'm never going to get a huge, huge touch on an, on an individual horse landing a bet for me. It's, it's nearly always singles. But I do remember one or two. Um, I got when you need them. You know, you know when you're in rag order and you need one a winner badly. And you, you like, I do remember in Galway where I backed the the big die in in a race and actually laid what pass and. Big Diane, oh, he crossed them and everything. He crossed them over left and right and everything. But one one race that sticks out in my mind for for the whole summer was um, up and under in Leperstown in the Maiden. Do you remember that race? Oh, I do. Yeah. You didn't back him, did I you? I did, yeah. Tom I Hamilton. Did. No, that wasn't Galway. This was oh. in a, this was in a maiden, a flat maiden. Oh, okay. But he, he got beaten Galway with Todd Hamilton, yeah. Tom Hamilton, yeah. and everyone was saying, "Oh, he's a dodge. You couldn't touch yeah. him." And he got to Leperstown, and it was like he was going back and tripping. Any flood I speak to, they were saying, "I'm going to leave him." And everyone was kind of putting doubts in my mind. Just, I said, "Geez, he has to win this. He has yeah. to win this." You know what I mean? He's like rated 105 or 6. He's running against nothing here. So he, so I faced him anyway, and so he turned in anyway. And he's he's he looks like he has the race covered. Like he's got yeah. this horse on the inside, belonged to Carmack T or something. So you're watching the telly anyway, and you just go on, go on. You know what I mean? And pass him, you dirty dog. <laughs> so next thing you see this thing coming down the outside. This song is for you. Yeah. And I think when he heard this song is for you coming. He kind of stuck his head out. I'd say it was you the, did too. I, no, I did too. <laughs> and it was, I'd say it was the only place he was in front was, on, was on yeah. the line. It was a miracle now that he yeah. won. But it was, it was like, it was such a relief to get him to win because he, because he was odds on. Now I had plenty on him. And the second thing is like. I could easily have left him, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I'd be kicking myself if he was good. Cause yeah, you're an idiot if you. If he yeah, was being, well, yeah. fellas were saying you couldn't trust him, and you couldn't trust him either. Yeah. Now he was an absolute monkey, everything. Yeah. But uh, but he got there now, and it was all oh, the, the relief was palpable now. So you were up rather than under, anyway. Oh, I was. And so it was I, funny. I actually remember watching that race and thinking he was probably beaten passing the line. I, like, I thought he'd won passing the line. Oh, did you? I okay. did. Yeah, but yeah. I, I'd like to see it a second time, and then when you see it a second time, you can do. Yeah. You so know. how are you feeling? You, it wins. And oh, you're just—is it pure relief? Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's not—it's—it's—it's it's, it's, it's what—it's not what you won. It's what you would have lost a lot yeah. of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. There you go. look, no, it, it wasn't a huge win or anything like that, but it was—it was a memorable one so, all the same. <laughs> I have to laugh. Jeremy sends in a question. Johnny's best touch <laughs> of the whole last six months. Yeah, well, you're it picking on John. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a touch in my heart as well. You know what I mean so? Like you, 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 it was a. Oh, like it was, it, it's it's nice to get one against the head that shouldn't okay. have won. You know what I mean? Okay, there you go. Up and under, up and under. Jeremy is Johnny's most memorable result since you saw him last. Our next question this week comes in from Paul Quinn, and we always get this question in week one. Johnny, could you please pick me out a horse at fifty to one or bigger to back at the Cheltenham Festival next March? Okay, so obviously you've you've obviously told us already that you're not afraid to back odds on shots. So this yeah. is the other end of the scheme. Yeah, of okay? course, yeah, yeah. So yeah. anything at 50 to 1 or Look, bigger? When, when, when I went looking for 50 to 1 shots, I mean, 
you, 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 the, the, like the horses. You're blind looking for them, yeah. Well, first of all, it's like you was, they were nearly all like Mr. Ed candidates down there. Do you know what I mean? They were <laughs> absolute donkeys. You couldn't find a horse with 51 head of shots. No, I found a few 33 to one shots. That'll have okay, to do. Okay, do you know right, what I mean? Right. An alternative. It's, it's okay. as close as I could get to a 50 to one shot anyway. Okay, go Look, for I, it. I'll go with three card brag for the, the National Hunt Chase. Okay. Because in my eyes, it's the, it's the first day so he's going to get some sort of dig in the ground which is absolutely like the softer the better yeah and i'd say there's no end whatsoever to his stamina none yeah. whatsoever i'd say if it was six mile he'd stay do you know what i mean mm. so i at that kind of price 33 to one i thought that was probably fair and just one other quick one i i, I could see something like the stairs hurdle is open to something coming into it yeah and i was very impressed with crambo the other day and even though he's a lot to find in ratings at the moment he's only won 33 i could you wouldn't be shocked if he crept into a race like that at some stage i did read your excellent column in the racing post uh, last week and you did say that crambo could develop into a stairs hurdle can they which i was shocked about but i did watch the race again he did bolt on oh it. absolutely you know he won with any amount in hand no it wasn't much of a race but like he, he's definitely much better than 133 okay there you go so there's two 33 to 1 what price is Crambo's even in there's the 33 to 1 33 to 1 okay yeah, two yeah, 33 yeah. to 1 shots from Johnny Crambo in the stairs hurdle and three car brag in the national hunt chase I managed to find a 50 to 1 shot with bet 365 that I just thought was too big of a price Johnny you won't have fond memories of this race now okay it was the race flooring Porter won at Cheltenham the weekend before last okay yeah we've all been caught was a little bit disappointing okay yeah but yeah he just looks like one pace doesn't he he jumps grand but just Everton is not really in a hurry yeah I just thought Three mile six, Cheltenham in March. I thought we've all been caught at fifty to one. I thought it was a reasonable introduction to fences. Yeah, I don't know what you thought. No, he ran okay. He, he ran okay. Look, he's he's a horse that he could develop into something like that. Yeah, so it wouldn't be surprising. Just thought the way he jumped. He's a real stay and chase he, he is, type yeah, jumper. He's yeah. not he's not flashy or no, anything. No, he's not. Like. No, no, that like he won't be quick enough for the for this or, no. the, or, the, or the old RSA anyway. Will he? Absolutely. Like, so. so there you go. We've all been caught fifty to one potentially for the National Hunt Chase. There you go. There's a few long shots for the Cheltenham Festival next March. And our final question this week comes in from Warren Barlow. Thanks for this, Warren. And it is, what is Johnny's million to one? I should say million to one. What is Johnny's <laughs> million to one horse this season, Johnny? The one horse that's fancied for a race at the Cheltenham Festival that has no chance whatsoever. What horse is a million? Yeah, look, I, I was looking through the uh, RSA and it looks a deep... It's the Brown Advisory. Uh, Brown advisory You'll never yeah. be invited to a dinner <laughs> thanks to Brown Advisory. You've said RSA about what four times already. What did Brown Advisory do anyway? The Brown Advisory, novices chase. Well, what did they do? Johnny, don't ask me hard questions <laughs> okay. like that. Okay. okay. Find um, out before the end of the right, show. Right, okay. I was going to pick two out of that race. I give no chance to you. Oh. One is Flooring Porter. Johnny, now Johnny, Johnny. No, Johnny, honestly, Johnny. Okay. Yeah, but you, you have something against this. No, horse, I don't. Right? I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I opposed him the last day, but now he went out to great price at the same time in the four horse race. Oh, well, tell me, he ended up back. No, too. I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> but I didn't lay him for a whole load, though, to be okay. fair, because he was the odds would be too big. But anyway, um, look, he got his own way, and and, and he bossed the race, got a great ride, and everything. But he's he's going to go into deeper division now. Like a lot of horses will win their first race. Easily, and then when they go up and up and grade into 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 different company, like he's going to be in more competitive. And the races that he's going for, like maybe his next race, it'll probably be Leperstone at Christmas, three mile. That's going to be a hard race. And and then and like every race he's going to be in from now on is going to be. He ain't going to get as soft as he did. Like surely a younger horse will take care of him at some stage. And I think you'll he'll have more pace pressure as well. Another horse in that division I'd give no chance to is Hermes Allen. None whatsoever. <laughs> I wouldn't fancy that now. No. Like, because when we were in Nichols, he, he said that he couldn't get over how small he was. Remember that? Yeah. So, like, he going, he's not going to have the scope. I, I wouldn't have thought of some of these big horses go, going chasing from um, last year. He there the two in that division that were like in or around 12, 14 to one shots. I would give him an earthly. Okay, there you go. Two million to one shots from Johnny. And they're both in the same race, the Brown Advisory Novices Chase. And they are Flooring Porter and Hermé Allen. Thanks very much for your question. So just before we come to Johnny's performance of the week where he counts down the best performances from three down to one over the last seven days, here's a members club offer from the Racing Post.
There you go, folks. There's still 50% of the first three months. There has been for a long time, and there still is 50% of the first three months. Become a member of the Racing Post Members Club. So, Johnny, performance of the week, the last seven days, it's been decent racing. We do, didn't have Down Royal on Friday and Saturday. That's now on this weekend, but you have plenty of good racing in England to pick from, Weatherby and so on, and Carlisle. Number three in your performances of the week is... Look... Um, when I was looking at this first, I, I, there was like hearts like let's be clear about it. The wooden cock wasn't didn't pub, make it. Wouldn't no, not really. No, because I just think he's a horse that everyone knows something about already, and he and he probably entitled to win that race. Maybe not as well as he did because he okay. did. He was impressive, and you could have put up maybe brave a gentleman's game against beaten bread. I mean that was a good performance. But I picked three horses that even I didn't know much about myself. You know what I mean? Okay. I just saw uh, horses that I never heard of. Two of them anyway. So the, the number three for me was a horse called Django Boy. He won a. He won a, a maiden hurdle in... Um, he was as keen as you in a night out, Johnny. He was. He was fierce free to post. I actually laid him because of that, Now, <laughs> I saw him go down to post and said, you'll do for me anyway, you won't get home. And you were delighted, I think. Oh, thrilled with the first, first mile of the race. Couldn't win. First mile of the race. And got nearly progressively freer as the race yeah. went on. So, so much so that, that the bond will let him on, let him off about his business. Were you, were you following the exchanges in running? Did he go out to a big price when he was miles clear? Like no, 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 I'm not sure. I don't okay. look at it that late because it's too. I'm watching at the races, which is eight seconds behind, so okay. it's kind of tell you what's happening. You don't, yeah. I don't bother looking at the last maybe second hand of a race, maybe. Okay. But like when he skipped clear, like you wouldn't be overly worried even if you were against him, no. because you'd be saying like he must get tired. And then the horse called uh, Teller the name, uh, which is a, like a big, big money pr a horse from um, the point to point, yeah. Blanc to Pauling. He closed sure in on him. And even jump by him at the last, yeah. and like for a horse like that to fight back, that doesn't happen too often. No. Like that took a bit of talent, I think. And uh, even listening to Nico de Bonneville afterwards, um, he said like I, I think Henderson was after kind of saying to some guy that he maybe two and a half. Well, he was saying no, he's a two miler. Oh no, two miler. Wow. He wouldn't go any further than two mile anyway. With, with his, he's an exuberant. Did you think it was interesting that Nico was there for that ride, one yes. ride, and wasn't in, in Weatherby for Lucia? Uh, yeah, exactly. It was. It was a pointer. Yeah, mm. it, it, like he had to be held in fairly high regard, and he was well back to. Like it was no surprise he won. Like I'd say he's he's even better than his performance. I, he looked a smart horse to me. Now I, I I think he's a decent animal. Excellent. Number two. No, number two was another novice hurdler. Who like he'd won a bumper in in I think it was at Exeter he won a point to point he won his maiden hurdle in Carlisle Sunday Johnny who, the name <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah Johnny who from J John John O'Neill yeah yeah uh, look he was Johnny who everybody knows who Johnny who yeah, is now he, he was awesome impressive. Yeah, yeah, awesome, impressive. Um, I didn't have a bet to race because the tongue tie was putting me off it, and maybe that'll catch him out going forward now. You know what I mean? Maybe like I hate the tongue ties. Why? What's the reason for that? Well, they must have some problem with their breeding. They don't put them on for design, do they? Like you know what I mean? So they, like they must have some issue with his. They tie the tongue down for so it helps their breeding. I mean, they don't do it for no reason anyway. So there must be some underlying issue there. So maybe that'll catch him up. But the gr ground was bad up a hill in Carlisle. You'd have said it kind of stopped me from backing him. But I watched him all around. His jump, he was magnificent. He was skimming the hurdles. Apart from the last year, but the race was won. But but at that stage, like you know, when when he comes in behind you in the race, John Janiel, and he's going well, it's all over. I like him. Oh, he's brilliant like rider, John absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like the fellas, I do hear fellas raving about different jockeys, but John Janiel is a fantastic rider, mm. even. A guy like the Bonneville, who's a great jockey too, like having the having the the, 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 the noose to let him off, that horse off at halfway in a race in, in Ascot and say, look, I can't fight you anymore now. If you yeah. keep doing this, you're going to get beat. We're, we'll have to go for home and take our chances. I see other clowns in there holding and dragging and pulling, and next thing they find nothing at the end of the race. Uh, like they, they, that impression again, Johnny? Yeah, but they're they're, they're reefing like they're all the way around. They they, yeah. they, they they don't ever use their noggin and say, look, I have to leave and go. You know what I mean? You just have to leave and go at so at certain points if you want to win the race. Yeah. Well, it's okay if you don't want to win it and make much leg like on them all day. <laughs> but I love backing John Johnny and I and I think when, when I'm on a horse and he's on the, the danger and he and he comes in behind you, it's like yeah, the guess. assassin coming. You're beat, yeah, okay. you're beat because he his horse is fine. Like when he's going well, he, he's hard, like there's plenty left. You know what I mean? So number two is Johnny. Who who is Johnny Deneen's first performance of the week? Number one in the new series well, is number one for this week was Mister Meggett. He won the bumper in Carlisle on that day. Like John Joe Man this week, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you'd have bet hundred to one on that Johnny Who would have been the most impressive winner in Carlisle. Looking at him anyway, I'd have, I would have said that you would, you would have said like, if what horse do you want to take home from this meeting? Once Johnny Who went by behind past line, you said he'd do me you anyway. Were getting the check, okay. But yeah, I said JP would sell him. Yeah, he'd laugh like that. Would, would, would he take ten or a week from? 
<laughs> installments, yeah, Johnny. Yeah, installments. That's what, I mean. that's what I mean, yeah. And if he wins the gold cup, we'll be able to pay him. <laughs> but anyway, um, look, I don't know what he beat. I don't know what he beat. He's a horse by Shen too. Like it, it, it didn't look a, it didn't look a complete rubbish race beforehand no. anyway. Now it looked, it looked well backed. Six to one to eleven to four, I think. Mm. And like you'd rarely see a horse come up the hill in Carlisle pulling a train like that in the, at the end of a two mile bumper. Like everything else was unconscious. Like you'll know the next day whether he's a good horse or not. But like if he's not a good horse, I wouldn't like to run the ones behind him anyway yeah. because he made some mince meat. And he, he was quickening when when John Joe was doing nothing. No, exactly. He was yeah. really quickening. Gee, he like looked a, he looked a really really good horse. Give us the name of that horse again. M- Mr. Megget. Mr. Megget is Johnny Deneen's performance of the week. So there you go, those were Johnny Deneen's three best performances of the last seven days and now it's time for his eye catcher. What horse caught Johnny Deneen's eagle eye over the My last My eye week? catcher was again John Joe O'Neill oh, this year. Yes. <laughs> Do you want, look, we'll go to Jack Dawes this year, right? I know we yeah, went to yeah. Ditchie last yeah, year. You'll have to bring me, I'd like to go there actually. We went, yeah. oh, Jack Dawes, lovely, there's a lovely, the Plough pub is on the top is of the Is that right, yeah? But went there on my stag, yeah. Come here. Lovely pub, we'll go there this year, you know well, what? If you, we'll if go. You, if you can sanction that, I'll right, go, Well, yeah. I'd say if he watches the show now, we'll be there in a heartbeat, okay? Right, okay. So he's had the two best performances and now he has the eye catcher. Yeah, I like the look of yes indeed, a horse in a three and a quarter mile handicap shade. Yeah. yeah, I was when I looked him up. I actually thought he was an Irish point to point horse. You know mm. what I mean? I didn't realise that he had come from France with a big rating of a one four two or something like that. Mm. You know, now he's down to one two seven. Like he, he got, um, he didn't really get a power packed drive. now on Sunday, I thought anyway. From your buddy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. John Joe, like he, he, he just crept into the race, and he, it was his first run. I'd say of the season. Um, he isn't that much running done either. He's only like I'd say run ten or twelve times. Mm-hmm. So he's only seven year old. Like, he's a stone wall to pick up one of these. He's entered again this weekend, I think. Oh, that's a t- quick turnaround, yeah. doesn't it? Like, you know what I mean? Mm. I, I don't know what kind of race you'd be, you'd be going for. A three-mile handicap chase and further even, like, because he finished strong. Mm. Like, he'd, he'd no bother staying three and a half mile. He's, he's a long-distance chaser anyway. And I could see him. He, I think he's an absolute cert to win one of them this year anyway. Oh, there you go. Do you know how I know that horse? Do you remember during COVID, there was no race in Ireland England, but there was French racing. Okay. And I remember he ran a couple of times during the spell where there was no Irish and English race, right. and he was on at the races, yeah? I didn't know that, no, Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah, yeah. He's your eye-catcher of the week. He was. I thought he was very eye-catching. Okay, there you go. If you're watching John Joe Senior or Junior, <laughs> pencils in, find a date where you can take me and Johnny over to Jack Dawes Castle. So that is Johnny Dineen's eye-catcher of the week. Yes, indeed. So, folks, what's happening this week time here on Up in the Ante? We have got a whole host of crack in action. We've got the first Grade 1, the rescheduled Labrooks Champion Chase at Down Royal on Saturday, seven days later than planned. But it's the first Grade 1 of the season. We're going to preview in that race as well as a couple of others. And we're going to kick off on Thursday at Clomel for the return of the beast. That is Alaho in the Clomel Oil Chase. Takes on only three rivals, Johnny. Uh, Janadil, French Dynamite and Grange Walk. A penalty kick for Alaho? Look, if he's right and ready to go, you'd, you'd, you'd fancy him. Sure, he's probably going to get got out in front, dictating away. You know what I mean? So look, you know, he's, if he's if he's back to his best, who knows? He hasn't run a long time at the same time. Right. The former person who stood in that very spot was a man called Gavin Lynch. Okay. He was interviewed on Racing TV the other day, and he was asked by Don McLean, I think, it was if there's any long-term fancy for the Chetland Festival, and he said Alaho for the Ryanair Chase. He thinks. He's value now, Alaho for Ch- Would he be on your radar for the Ryanair no, now? No, I, I, I don't like backing horses that are off missing the season, missing 18 months anyway. He wouldn't be on my radar now, maybe he'd be right. Um, he's going to be 10 years of age too. Like, if he'd, if he'd have stayed healthy and won last year's Ryanair, he'd be going for four in a row. Like, mm-hmm. that's not easy to do, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? To stay, like, and, and plus he had run in the... In, in the in the Brown advisory the year before, just nipped by um, Champ and, and Minelindo. Right, yeah. So like he's had plenty of battles at, at the at the festival already. Look, horses with them kind of issues, I, I couldn't be entertaining them anti post anyway okay. myself. The only thing is, it's a, it's, it's kind not of a great a bleed. Division. It's not it's not a tendon or anything like that. It's a, it was a bleed, I think. Yeah, but they're they're all nothing until they like. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. a bit like a dream to share any stone bruise. You know what I mean? And the next thing is out till January. Do you know what I mean? That yeah. kind of thing. Like these things are. He, he's missing for eighteen months for a reason. At the same time, okay. do you know what I mean? Whatever it is, and it's n- it's never good in a horse. Like he should. If he's back to his best, you'll know about probably by the betting if they win this. French Dynamite is, is a reasonable opponent at mm. the same time. But look, Alaho at his best would win this. But like, who's to say Alaho will ever be as good as he was? Will you either back him or lay him? Oh, I won't have any, take any part in that race anyway. Okay. No okay. chance, yeah. Excellent. Okay, moving on to Friday. Usually on a Tuesday, but now it's on a Friday. The Holden Gold Cup. God, I used to love this race back in college on a Tuesday. Exeter, back yeah, in the days yeah. of Cotto Star and... 
Um, all those kind of Edward and Bloods used to run direct yeah. route in them. Uh, this year, it's it's a, it's probably not the best renewal of the race, is it? Oh, it's it is an awful race. Yeah. <laughs> it is, isn't it? I was actually looking at it and I said to myself, why did they not run Boot Hill in this? Yeah. I said, they would Boot Hill would have hosed in this. And then I looked and... It was worth more money. Yeah, it, it yeah. was. Yeah. Boot Hill's race was worth 20 grand more. Because I said this is 80 grand. I said, should that ran for about maybe 30 grand in yeah. that. And it was a 100 grand race. Mm. I didn't even realise it was a Boot Hill's race. So they, so they obviously knew what they were doing. I didn't. <laughs> well, look, what's going to win it? Look, what's going to win it? It's a very hard race because y- you can't pinpoint anything that's really strong in the race. Mm. The top editor of the Gene probably carried top weight, will he? And then if he does... He wa- could struggle this season, could he? He probably way, will, yeah. yeah. Warlord as a horse, I was given a chance. Yes. To, yeah, I was given a chance. Look, he was, he's only got 10 stone one. Like he was like fourth in an article, second in, in one of the, in a novice chase in, in Aintree. Yes. Had a terrible season last year, though. Mm. Needs to bounce back from that. Um, he was 15 dead favourite race last year, ran bad. So, But like, if he did come back to his best... He'd be the one I'd be going for. It'd be a tentative selection at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and just as a few, it is running quite well. Like yeah, even actually, the, other, yeah. the other day, a plumped on a Monday, like the horse bounced out, made all the numbers. Yeah. I think a Warlord, like he ran the race last year of 149. He's running up 140 this year. The team, the Tizzer team, are in better form. He, yeah. It could be interesting. Like, put it this way, I, his rating wouldn't bother me. If he had won, if, if he was running off a 152, I'd give him a chance. But he, if he runs the way he last year, he won't win off 119. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think his rate is irrelevant, to be honest. Yeah. He's a horse that he, he'll either bounce back or he won't. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it, Johnny. He will. He'll do one of those two things. Yeah. Okay. So we're both kind of in agreement with Warlord in the Hall and Gold Cup. The Bottle Green Hurdle, it's a great three at uh, Down Royal. The race Jeski started his champion hurdle winning season in. Uh, any potential champion hurdle flyers in no, this? But Irish I, point against Magical Zoe. I, 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 Irish point is... is, is you like horse, him. I like Irish Point as a, as a potential, f- f- uh, whatever, flying the ointment for the stairs hurdle rather than any other race, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I think he's two and a half mile minimum. His trip is against him here. He's a quality horse to Irish Point. Um, Magical Zoe, he, she, he's given her, what has he given her? About nine pounds, I think. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's officially rated about 11 more than her. So I, I think he has every chance of beating her even at two miles. Yeah. It'll, be, it'll be testing two miles at the same time. Mm, she's but course form as well. She right? has, yeah. But I, I think Irish Point is... Sometimes these horses that are effective, it they'll be able to they'll be able to get it done even a slightly trip that maybe doesn't even suit them. I wouldn't bet against Irish Point anyway. No way would I bet against him. I think he's a proper horse. I think Magical is always just a good mare. Okay, so proper horse against a good mare. It's Irish Point for Johnny. I'd agree. I think Irish Point is going to take the world of beating in that Grade Three at Down Royal on Friday. And don't forget, it's going to be a good race at Down Royal on Friday. We've got a beginners chase that the likes of Sam Crow, Envoy Allen, uh, and Mighty Potter won last year on Friday and could see the return of Corbett's Cross, potentially against the likes of Founder 50 or something like that. And we've also got a, a Maiden Hurdle where Gordon has a few nice entries in there as well, the likes of Better Days Ahead, Firefox, My Trump Card. So Friday at Down Royal could be a very interesting day for your trackers. Moving on to Saturday, and we're going to look at two races at Wincanton, starting off Johnny Deneen with the rising star, Novices Chase. And do you know what runs in this, Johnny? What? Might I? Oh, that's right, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord... Lantern. Yeah, he actually ran well in Newton Abbott. Yeah, but sure, he, like, did you see the mistake he made? Yeah, he, he was made, jumping beautifully, yeah. and then he said, oh, do you know what? Yeah. Let's, we'll have a bit of crack here and we'll make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, you know, he made two blunders at the end of the race, and I'd say and he, the, the one in front was, was gasping to get beat. I'd say he needed to run and everything, yeah. you know what I mean? So, and it was even a fleeting moment up the run where you thought he was actually going to get up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, then he said, I know, I like, might I die, think, I don't win those races. <laughs> I think the betting even told you that, that Complete Unknown probably needed to run. He was quite weak mm. in the betting. Mm. And now he did everything right in front, but but might I didn't really want to win. I, I um, defences even in Wincanton probably stiffer than Newton Abbott too. I thought he jumped well though before the mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I wouldn't dismiss him completely. He's probably the obvious stage, but I think the favour is a good thing here in Oh, yeah. As long as the ground isn't complete swamp, like I'd fancy him very strong in this race. Okay. I thought he ran well in in um in Chepstow. Mm. Like he gave away the lead to unexpected party, and he gave away the race to him too by doing that. I'd say this time he'd be slightly closer to the pace. Maybe try and make all. And if he does get out in the bunny here, he won't be beaten. Napper's Hill for Johnny. The elite hurdle, it looks like potentially another benefit for Paul Nichols. Yeah, look, I was surprised that the only danger is probably Hansard. But, but I was surprised that they were so close to each other in the bit. Because Rubo's had a run. Hansard mm. has come from Gary Moore, whose horses aren't really flying no. and probably taken their run. Rubo's had a run. It's 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 the man's local track, Paul Nichols. Um, I, th- I thought he'd win it. Uh, like Hansard has a chance, all right. He's not a bad horse, mm. but he's run against Rubo before and got beaten by him yeah. in Kempton. 
Like he's he's a good running against in the pocket in in the uh, in, in, in entry. But look, I'd be going with Rubo. I couldn't see why Rubo won't win. Yeah, I'd I was surprised he wasn't a bit shorter. Well. Yeah, I, and I was surprised Nappers Hill isn't short. I think the two of them will win, but I think Nappers Hill is a proper good thing at the okay, same time. Proper good thing. Uh, there you go, win Canton. And the final race, the Labrox Champion Chase, the first grade one of the domestic season, Johnny Deneen. Uh Jerry Kalam, V Conflatus, maybe Delta Work, who knows, potentially N Violent. I'd say we're going to get a max of four, maybe. Is that, is that all? Yeah, yeah. Maybe Go five, away. yeah. Right. Look, Jerry. Nelindo is in there as well. Jerry Kalamb is, is 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 a potential Gold Cup winner. He's been hard nearly pick right now to win the Gold Cup. Would you, Jerry? I think so. Yeah. So if I was to give you a free bet right now for the Gold Cup, you put it on Jerry. Kalamb. Yeah, I would. Yeah, wow. I would. And the fact that he's only going to run twice, I think. Yes. He, like, Saturday, Christmas, Cheltenham. Yeah, so I'd imagine he'd be pretty straight. There's not much point in running, running twice and not being fit, like to run in your very first race. So, mm. like, they, if they can afford to have him straight here, let him let him down a bit and come back for Christmas and let him down again and come back again. So, he should win. He should win. I mean, there's, there, there's the horse related to him in the race, anyway, talent wise, in my eyes, anyway. Like, has he a chance in Cheltenham? Of course, he has had the other three chances, a zillion. And one zillion well, cubes. So, yeah, so it's yeah. a zillion cubes. You've gone from a million, a billion Johnny, to a zillion. Yeah, do you know what that's like? Your bank balance always. Yeah, yeah. With yeah, all these yeah. shows you're doing. So you've gone yeah. from a billion or a million last the, season to. A zillion. A zillion is the new cube. price now. A cube, cube. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A zillion cube, okay. Yeah, look, I think Jerry Clam is a proper racer. They probably should still be unbeaten, even. You know what I mean? Will you back Jerry Clam on Saturday? If a fella could tell me that he was fit enough to win, I would. Okay, if he's fit enough to win, there's four runners, Jerry Kalam, Conflated, uh, maybe Delta Work, Envoy LN. You've heard that he's in good form, he's fit enough to win, he's four to six, would you back him? Yes, oh, yes, as long as, he's, as long as he's a uh, fella can tell me, yeah, he's, he's good to go, yeah. Okay, okay, I'll let you know. All right, do that, okay. yeah, please. There you go, so it is Jerry Kalam, the return at Down Royal on Saturday, and that's what's happening this week. Now, open the anti viewers. Have we got a treat in store for you? <laughs> and I, when I say a treat, I mean an actual treat because it's a new segment of the show called Johnny's Midweek Treat. We don't want you waiting for the weekend for Johnny, Johnny's charity bet. We want a midweek treat from Johnny to set you up for the weekend. So this is like laying up, Johnny. You know, you're All on a right, par yeah, five, yeah, yeah. right? You're hitting a little five iron just to lay up in front of the water. We want to get people in a good position for the weekend, okay? So this is your midweek treat. So every week, Johnny Deneen is going to be putting up a horse that runs on either Wednesday or Thursday for all you eagle-eyed up in the anti-viewers that wants to get on early in the week. So Johnny's midweek treat every week. Johnny will be putting up one horse that runs on Wednesday or Thursday. So Johnny, this is now this is big. This is important. It's a new segment. We want to start off with a bang. We need a winner. What's okay. your first midweek treat? I'll go with something that's not too short because I know people don't like them. That Johnny, you that, yeah, you get very you get abused for your short prices, <laughs> don't you? I basically yeah, but you don't fairness, mind. You but take it, it on the chin. <laughs> Look, I'll go with um, a horse called Castlefield Boy. It's in a three mile handicap hurdle in Clonmel. It won at the last meeting in a very similar race. It's gone up eight pounds. It's 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 even though it's a seven year old, it hasn't a lot of miles in the clock, and and I think it's running against horses that are like pretty exposed. Yes, I think it won it won it won with its mouth open the last day. I think two and a half lengths doesn't do it justice. It is gone up eight pounds, but it has Michael Sullivan, and I, I think it'll creep away, there, and I do think it'll win. Castlefield Field boy, boy. it's long to Pat Foley, yeah. Pat Foley's it's Castlefield one, one, Boy. One forty, I think. In the one forty at Clonmel. On Castlefield Thursday. Boy, there you go. That is Johnny's first midweek treat of the new series. So that was Johnny's midweek treat. Now it's time for DJ versus JD. Okay, so last year this was DJ versus Johnny. And then during the summer we realised that actually Johnny's initials the other way around. Yeah, my initials. That's so right, yeah. We thought it was catcher to have DJ versus JD. So this is DJ versus JD. So this is our weekly charity bet competition where our good friends at Bet365 are kindly putting up 50 euro each to us for charity bets. Johnny, you were terrific in this last season. You absolutely annihilated me. <laughs> you won with your mouth open, and I am potentially a, a zillion cubes. No, you're not. No, it's okay. in the okay. head to head. You're right. you okay. not shorter than that. Here no, we I go. Think. Okay, right. So we, this is the charity bet. This is important is for charity. We got some good funds to charity last season. Let's try and get some good funds this year. Let's kick us off with a winner, Johnny Deneen. Yeah, look, uh, I, 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 on the weekend, uh, there's not that many races where you know for certain the horse is running. I'm going to go with Napper's Hill, keep it safe. You really like Napper's Hill? Uh, I think it's a good thing in this race, I do, yeah, I do. Okay. Like I thought 11 to 10 or whatever, I think it's 11 to 10, I think that's pretty yeah. fair, I do. Okay. Yeah, he'd be one for me now at, at, in around even money, I think. How will you feel if Might I, Johnny Burke, is sitting on your tail, turning uh, in, cruising? Oh, well, you won't be that worried, will you, like, because he won't go by more than likely <laughs> if Might I. So, look, you've, I mean, if he is sitting on your tail, you'd expect him to be going well turning in, wouldn't you, you Might would, I? Yeah. Three but in the straight. Whether he'll go by is another thing, I don't know. I, 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 I suspect he won't. It's probably a better calibre horse than Appers Hill, anyway. 
Well, he's, he's a nice bit in handed hurdle ratings anyway, oh, for starters. Exactly. You know, so there you so. go. 50 quid, 11 to 10. Happy with that? Oh, very much so, yeah. 50 quid, Nappers Hill in the Rising Star Novices Chase at Wincanton on Saturday for Johnny. And uh, I'm going to Aintree, the 320 at Aintree. It's a conditions hurdle race. And I'm going to go for Bruin Up a Storm of Ollie Murphy's. It looks a match race between Bruin Up a Storm and West Balboa. I just think with Bruin Up a Storm, these races, like he was sent off a short price favour for this race last year. And went at the first if you remember remember yeah. the short price there's only four runners went at the first I just think these type of races like that that National Spirit Hurdle at Fontwell these little conditions great at races seem to really suit Bruin up a storm um, and I just think his rating like he's rated in the 150s I think he's probably just a better calibre horse than West Balboa he's 2-1 to one with Bet365 Ollie Murphy has got a couple of others in the race like Strong Leader was very disappointed in his return to action so a few of those don't turn up it could be a small field. It could basically be brewing up a storm against West Balboa. And I'm happy with brewing up a storm in a match race. So I'm going to have 50 quid on brewing up a storm at 2-1 to one with Bet365. Hopefully, Johnny, that will be two winners. Nappers Hill for Johnny and brewing up a storm for me. That's our weekly DJ versus JD charity bet competition. Now, folks, it's time for the festival teams. So here on Up in the Ante in the new series, we've made a few little tweaks. And this is one of the tweaks where myself and Johnny are not going to be putting up a horse every week. And embarrassing. <laughs> so what we're doing here is, okay, the festival teams are myself and Johnny are going to pick 10 each before the Cheltenham Festival. So we're going to get a team of 10 before the festival kicks off in March. And on the final Up in the Ante show, before... The Chetland Festival kicks off. We're going to have a transfer deadline day where you can get rid of one horse and transfer in another one. Okay, Johnny? Okay. So we have to get to 10 before that show. Okay, so we'll, the teams will be 10. Hopefully, we'll have 10 horses on our teams come the Cheltenham Festival. So have you got a tip for the opening week? No, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to sit in my hands for the time being okay. anyway. Yeah, I just think it's a fraction early to be trying to find one though. You know? okay. I'm going to leave it off to you. Um, look, I was tempted to go one maybe pick one but look I think what were you tempted by I was tempted to go with the Arkle I'm thinking of going Facile Vega yes you're very sweet on him look it's a race that there, there can't be too many can win it uh, like, like the novice hurdle races I mean are far too early to be trying to pick one in the, in the novice hurdle like I think like when Constitution Hill won his um, Supreme, he wouldn't even heard of this time of the year. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Same with um, Imperial Pass last year. Mm -hmm. He didn't run until or December, I'm sure, in this. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to pick like this, a whole world of un, un, untapped talent, I'd say, in the novice hurdle division. Mm -hmm. at, at both, at the two mile, two and a half, and the three mile. So I think in a novice chase like this, there's nothing can come into it. Bar, like The winner of the article will definitely come from, from a, a, and this is at a stretch in my eyes anyway, is Marie Nationale. Facile Vega, Mr. Policeman, who I don't fancy myself, and other people do, I don't Why? fancy, I just don't think he would be good enough. Okay. I think he'd beaten cash back down in Cockfield, getting carried away at that anyway, to be honest. And and, and in the pocket is a very is a dangerous yeah. horse, if he's campaigned at two miles. And he will start at two miles, I would have thought, you know what I mean? That's four. They're, they're the only four that can win. Okay, yeah, in the pocket was due to run in Wexford. Well, he was, over, over two, two miles, miles yeah. yeah. Look, in the pocket, we'll run a two mile, probably win a two mile, and maybe go to Christmas two mile, and they'll see from there how they're going to go. But in the pocket, very good horse. Yes. Very, very good horse. I'd be afraid of him, a lot more afraid of him than Mr. Policeman. Would you? Oh, I wouldn't give, I don't fancy Mr. Policeman at all. Beating okay. cash back down Cork, it's no, nothing for him in my eyes anyway. And like his, it is like his, I don't know, look, just for this talking about him, I wouldn't have him anyway. Like, I'd be surprised if he's better than Fessel Vega anyway, for okay. starters, yeah. Okay. Like, will Paul Tonin ride Mr. Policeman over Fessel Vega? I wouldn't think You're so. If you didn't. I wouldn't think so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, this, it. It, it's the one race I think where not many can win. It's the race I was half thinking of going for Fassel Vega. Vega. But what I, price is Fassel Vega? Five to one. And you think five to one is value now? You do? Uh, look, I, I, I do in, in so far as that he, he, I can see, I can see a situation where he could be six to four in the day, maybe. You know wow. I mean? Okay. You know that. Look, I think at this time of year you've got to be getting about three times. That's my my theory. They were three times the price. So if you if you think Fassel Vega can be five to three or less on the day, then you can chance him. Five to three, okay. I did read your excellent column actually in the big jump off and you did say that. You think three times the price. At n right now, yeah. Right now. Yeah. 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 You have then to get- Then it condenses as the season it's, goes uh, it's Maybe Christmas or double the price, you yeah, know what I mean? Okay. And near the time, on like 50% or something like so that. So kind of you're not, you're not having the first member of your team this week, but if you had, it would have been Fasel Vega. Yeah, yeah, but I, 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 I would rather see him entered in a race first, though. Yeah, and on that note, Johnny Deneen, I did read your column in the big jump off, and I learn from you every week, Johnny. You know what? <laughs> My aim in life is to try and be more like you, Johnny, okay? I don't know about that, so, though. 
this is my thinking, okay? I wasn't like you, you know, I wanted to be the shrewd one and say, right, I'm not putting up out this week, you know, I'm going to be real shrewd because after my catastrophe last season, okay? And I was all, for all intents and purposes, I was not going to put up a selection today. But one of your key things is if you are picking a horse or having a bet anti post for Cheltenham, you like to see them entered in a race. And the horse I really like for Cheltenham is entered on Friday oh, well, that's a good at sign, Down yeah. Royal. So my first member of my festival team is Corbett's Cross in the Brown Advisory Novices Chase at a standout 16 to 1 with Bet365. That will be available on their site from 6 o'clock this evening. Corbett's Cross 16 to 1 for the Brown Advisory for a couple of reasons, Johnny, okay? He was a very good hurdler last season. He'd done a lot in a short space of time. He's a big bruise and chestnut. I, I thought, to be honest, he, he looks a chaser. He looks like, you know, your typical stay-in, powerful chaser. To beat Found a 50 over two miles at Nace, when Found a 50 never missed a beat, I thought that was a hell of a performance. Yeah. Then it was a, a big ass to go to the Albert Bartlett. Would he have won? Probably not. But the max he would have been beaten was probably three lengths in the Albert yeah. Bartlett. He ran out at the last for whatever reason. Look, I, I don't know why he ran out. Obviously, there might be a chink there somewhere. But... Uh, nothing before that has suggested there was any chink in his armour whatsoever. Um, I think he's going to make a smash and chaser. Uh, Emmett Mullen says he's going to run it down Royal on Friday in that beginner's chase over two miles three. Look, it's probably a little bit on the sharp side, but this horse has got a touch of class. He won over two miles. If he did jump well, if he won on... if it, Put it this way, if he wins on Friday... I think he'll be favoured for the Brown Advisory afterwards. Yeah. If he's second or third but's in a nice run, they might even cut him because it's over a trip too short. To me, he's a horse that I could see being a leading contender for maybe a Gold Cup down the line. And I, I, I just think at, at the moment, because he's running Friday, I think now is the time to put him up. So my first member of my festival team is Corbett's Cross, Emmett Mullins, in the colours of J.P. McManus. He bought the horse off Paul Byrne. I think he could be a potential star this season. So 16-1, to 1, Corbett's Cross for the Brown Advisory Novice Chase is the first member of my festival team. So if you fancy Corbett's Cross, or maybe you fancy some of Johnny's anti-post fancies, would you fancy over 500 quid in free bets? Of course you would. Here's all about it. So... There you go, folks. That is episode one in the brand new series of Up in the Ante, Done and Dusted. Well, Johnny, how are you feeling now after that? Ah, oh, that's fine. I mean, it's a... Uh, <laughs> You're a dab hand at these now. Ah, look, it, 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 it's true. They're talking about horses. You're like talking about horses anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so I can't talk about much else anyway, to be honest. <laughs> and Johnny, this this was the moment for your debut last season. There was people in the world that didn't know Johnny the Now, I know all true people did. But there were people <laughs> watching this that didn't know who you were this time last year. I now they can't get enough of you. I don't know about that now, but you How are you? How are you finding fame anyway? Ah, oh, it's not even fame. It's not. But you're, I know that if, if you're watching films at home, eventually they'll grate you, though, won't they? Don't <laughs> care who they are. <laughs> even the even the, the best of characters will, will will get on your nerves. So yeah. uh, I think the, there's a kind of a, honey, a honeymoon period for films like me, maybe. But yeah. could, it might be, be on the last day. Of honeymoon. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah. And these fellas say, "Look at that dirty thing again." Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, we're not even near that. Say, I would say we're on we're on day three of the honeymoon. In the Bahamas, I don't know. Right? I don't we still know. have another week to go, right? Yeah. We're still eating and enjoying ourselves. Um, obviously, it's it's going to be like the winter's great, great racing coming up, and we've got massive weekends in Ireland, like Down Royal Friday and Saturday this week. The following weekend, we've got the Navin Racing Festival at Navin two days in a row. You've got the the big meeting at Cheltenham, of course. Then you bounce out into the big meeting at Punchestown. You've got the Morgiana and the John Durkin. And then you're into Fairy House, the Winter Festival with the Hatton's Grace, the Royal Bond and the Drimbor. It's bang, 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 bang. What yeah. a time to be a jump racing fan. Yeah, the jumps racing. I, I, I might be dreaming now, but I've never in my life, I don't think, seen as many good horses in the jumps. Wow. Like novice horses in particular. Like horses that could be absolutely anything. French horses coming even from last year. There's, like You look through the list of horses like that Mullins has. He's not in his own either. Like there's horses there coming from point to point. They're costing, they're costing the sweep five and six hundred thousand. Mm. That they're going to places like Paul Nichols and they're like they're actually made a, They've made a big effort to to, to um, buy horses before they get to the sales. I think that that they're not being left with the ones that fitters don't want. Mm. So they're going over the top of people, buying them the minute they cross the line and point to point. And on Willie Mullins, his stable tour is in the Racing Post next Monday. I visited Cloy Sutton before he went off to the Melbourne Cup. Yes, Willie Mullins' eight-page pullout in the Racing Post. Or if you're a Racing Post 
Members Club member. You can read it online, and if you're not, you can get 50% off. Remember that from earlier in the show, but Willie Mullins a stable tour, unmissable stable tour, will be in the Racing Post next Monday, or online from, I think, 6 o'clock on Sunday night. So there you go, Johnny. Good to have you back. Yeah, absolutely, David. Yeah. We will be back every Tuesday at 6 o'clock for Up in the Ante, right now, until the Cheltenham Festival in March. Thanks for joining us. He's been Johnny Deneen. I've been David Jennings. This has been the first episode in the brand new series of Up in the Ante.